If you would, turn with me in your Bible to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. As you turn there, I want to tell you a little story. Back in the, back in the day when there were old country stores, there was a... You know, they had the big barrel of molasses. Well, there was a mom and she used to take her little boy there and the little boy would, would sneak off and he'd stick his finger in that barrel of molasses and lick the molasses off his finger. Well, the, the storekeeper caught him one day. And the storekeeper caught him one day and said, I'm going to teach this little fellow a lesson. I'm going to teach him not to stick his finger in the barrel of molasses. So he took the little boy up by the bridges. Now this isn't part of the sermon, but I'm going to say this anyway. This is back in the day when you could discipline a child. He took the little boy up by his bridges and he dunked his whole head in that pot, in that barrel of molasses. And he took him and he stood him out in front of the store. Well, much to the shopkeeper's surprise, he thought the little boy would be crying and regretful but he goes back out front to check on him. And here's the little boy say, God, give me the tongue to equal this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> the title of today's sermon is Bless Me. You, know, you hear people sneeze and you hear people pray and they're always talking about, Lord, bless my sister. Lord, bless my brother. Lord, bless my church. We always ask God's blessing on all sorts of things. But I want to talk today about, I want to bless me. You see, I'm a big old hog when it comes to God's blessings. I want every one of them He has in store for me. And I believe this. I believe we're going to get to heaven one day. And I believe God's going to literally show us every blessing He had in store for you that you did not take advantage of. I believe He's going to show us every blessing He wanted to give us but couldn't because we didn't follow Him like we should. I believe God is literally going to show us that. Now, we're not a name it, claim it, blab it and grab it kind of church. We're just not. There's plenty of those out there. If you want to get involved in one of those, they're there for you. I want to caution you in that because... Uh, when you read these verses and we read them together, a lot of churches take this out of context. You'll recognize the verses there in 1 Chronicles 4, 9, and 10 as the prayer of Jabez. And as we read that together, let's all stand and read God's Word. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10 read like this. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you again for this opportunity to be in your house. And I thank You for these verses. Lord, I thank You that they are here and we can read and study them and understand what Your Word says as You've called us to do and see that You have so much in store for Your children. So many things You want to bless Your church and Your servants with, Lord. If we'll just take hold of those blessings, Lord, and follow You. Father, I thank You for Your presence here, most importantly of all, on this very special day, Lord. We want to remember and commemorate what You've done for us, what You've done in each of our lives, Father, what You did for all creation when You rose from the grave, Lord. We thank You for that. Lord, I ask once again that You give me every word to say and every thought to have that everything that comes from this pulpit today, Lord, will be directly from You. And that You would receive all the honor and all the glory and all the praise for it, Father. For it's in the name of Your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
See, I told y'all last week I wasn't going to say, now y'all can be seated because look, everybody figured it out. <laughs> Amen, I'm getting better. I read this and we know this is the prayer of Jabez and, and, and we talk about not being a prosperity gospel kind of church where everything is about me and what I can get and my relationship with God not being about me serving God but being about me finding out what I can get out of God. That's not the kind of church we want to be. That's not what the New Testament church was about. That's not what the Old Testament church was about. That's not what the church of Jesus Christ is about. But there is some confusion here because we see this man Jabez and he prays for some blessings on himself. And God certainly honored that prayer. You know, I understand that I don't always have the answers. In fact, the older I get, the more I understand. I'm not even sure I know the questions. But as I study this here, I see that it's, it's pretty clear what God's trying to tell us. In fact, I, I did hear about one pastor that thought he had all the answers. He, he was at a church and he decided to go visiting his, his parishioners, his church members. So he goes out to visit his church members. And he goes to one house and he sees their lights on. He knows there's people home and he, he knocks on the door and nobody comes to the door. So he, he knocks on the door some more and nobody comes to the door. And he gets really frustrated because he knows he's there to visit them. He's took his time to go to this house. He wants to visit with them and minister to them. And they won't come to the door. So in his frustration, he takes his card, his business card from the church, and he writes on it, Revelation 3 and 20. And he sticks it on the door. Revelation 3 and 20 reads, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. The following Sunday, the pastor is, has got the offering. They've taken up the offering. And, and there's his card in there. The card he left on that door. That card in there had, Thank you, Pastor. But read Genesis 3 and 10, which reads like this. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. <laughs> we don't always have all the answers. And there seems to be some confusion over this passage here called the prayer of Jabez. In fact, you know, there's, there's been several books written about this. There's a whole church movement that's based on this one passage here. So we really want to take a look at it. And I understand that this man Jabez made requests of God and God granted his request. So there's something to this. We need to understand this. Let's look at verse 9. It says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. The first thing we want to see this morning is God blesses righteousness. God blesses righteousness. Now this isn't the whole message, but if you think I can just go out here and act a fool and do anything I want to do and just live, lead this life of sin and then I'm going to ask God to bless me, it's just not going to happen. You may collect some material things. You may collect some earthly things. You may collect some things you think are blessings. But you're not going to collect the things that are most worth the most. You're not going to collect the treasures in heaven. That's the blessings I want. But God blesses righteousness. And as we see, it says, Jabez was more honorable than his brother's. You know, I would say the first thing in keeping myself righteous and living a life that is pleasing to God and our church being a church that pleases God is for us to be in His house. And if we read prophecy and we understand that the end times the Lord calls us to gather together, more as the end approaches, not less. There was a... A woman, her son was in bed it was Sunday morning and, and she went to him and she says, aren't you going to get up and go to church this morning, young man? He says, no ma'am, and there's two reasons. One, I don't like them and they don't like me. 
She said, well, I've got two reasons that you should get up and go to church. She said, what's that? She said, you're 54 years old and you're the pastor. <laughs> Folks, we ought to be in church. And I'll say this, another side note, I'm going to chase rabbits all morning. I'll say this, I don't care where you're at on Saturday night. I don't care what you did yesterday. You need to be in God's house on Sunday morning. Amen. 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 They would amen that in the Baptist church. I'm just saying. Well, I'm not Baptist today, amen. God blesses and honors and shows favor to righteousness. Matthew 5 and 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Psalm 24 and 5 says, He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of His salvation. And then Psalm 5 and 12 sums it up. It says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as a shield. Folks, if I want God's blessing on me, I want God's blessing on my life, I want all the things that He has for me in this world and the next, He expects me to live a righteous life that pleases Him. First, if I want God to bless me, I should understand that God blesses righteousness. The second thing, God blesses us where we are. Look at verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Now why would Jabez ask to enlarge his territory? He was simply asking for the same thing that each of us as children of God and Christians bought by the blood of the Lamb and born again should want. And that's to increase our area of influence. Now what do you mean by that, Brother Tim? I mean, I should be continually asking God to bless me with a greater ability to reach people in His name. There's, I can't think of anything that would bless me more this morning other than not getting caught on fire. That would bless me more this morning than to have somebody give their life to Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you, there is power in the Word of God. There is power in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. The more people I can get that Gospel out to, the more people God has a chance to change their life and change their eternity. Each and every one of us should be looking for a greater area of influence so that we can spread the gospel, so we can minister to people, so we can help people, so we can show people the love of Jesus Christ. I've heard it said many times now. This world is tired of hearing about Christianity and they're ready to see some. Amen? amen. amen. That's easy to say amen to on Sunday morning, but how about Monday morning? I want to hear amen on that on Monday morning. You know what? First Chronicles 2.55 tell us that Jabez is not only a person, but a place. God blesses us where we are at. You know, if I'm one of these people that every time something doesn't go my way, every time I don't get my way, and everything, every time something's not just like I want it, I go run to another church, I go run to another job, I go run to another friend, I go run to another relationship. Hello? <coughs> Folks, there's a reason the divorce rate is 50% and climbing. Because the first time things don't go my way, the first time I'm not getting what I want out of the situation, I want to run to another place. What's the old saying? The grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. And we've become a society of fence jumpers that's continuously out there looking at that greener grass on the other side of the fence. And where's it got us? Where's it got us? Do you see a great mighty move of God in this country that was founded and built on the principles of God? No, I see this, I see this country going to the toilet. Because we've refused 
to follow God anymore. But His Word tells us, I'll bless you where you're at. Folks, I'm telling you, as a pastor of a church, I'm determined I'm just going to stay. If I've got people that want rid of me, I'm just going to wait you out. I might live longer than you. I'd rather stay and pray than leave and grieve. I'm going to stay. I'll just wait you out. I'm hard-headed. You'll get tired before I leave. Amen? We need to be ter determined in our marriages, in our friendships, in our relationships, and yes, in our churches. I'm going to stay and pray. And when we determine that I'm going to stay and pray, God will bless you where you're at. Too many times I think, well, if I go to this church over here, God's going to bless my ministry. No, He's got you there, so He bless you where you're at. If I go, if I go run off with this woman, Oh, I think it'd be great. No. God's going to bless your commitment to the woman you're with. If I just moved to this neighborhood, everything would be fine. Maybe God wants to bless you in the neighborhood you're at. How about this? Maybe God wants to bless you so you can bless somebody else. We don't always think of that. God blesses, blesses righteousness. God blesses us where we are. And God blesses us by keeping us from evil. Again in verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me. And look at this part. And that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. Jabez's mother called him Jabez. It means one that will cause pain. One that will cause grief. He says, Lord, keep me from evil so that I would not cause pain. So that I would not cause pain to others. In fact, keep me from evil so that I can be a blessing to somebody else. <clears throat> Romans 3 and 10 say, None are righteous, no, not one. We like that and we understand that this morning. But if we study the Hebrew here, that word evil, keep me from evil, has two connotations. One, it's the evil that the evil one, that Satan, the devil, the deceiver, lays out as a trap for you. Jabez is asking God, protect me from my adversary. Protect me from the deceiver. Protect me from the devil. And that's something we should pray every day. Pray that over your husband. Pray that over your wife. Pray that over your mom and daddy. For goodness sake, pray that over the kids. Lord, please protect my kids from the evil one. Amen. Amen. The other connotation of that word in the Hebrew, if you study that out, is to protect us from evil that we do. You know, most of the trouble in my life, most of the trouble in my life, I got into not because some evil somebody did to me, but because the evil I got into all by myself. And I love to say the devil made me do it, but you know what he did. I got into my trouble all by myself. I didn't need any help from anybody. I just ran and jumped right into it, if you don't know the truth. But God's Word says in verse 10 that He blesses us by keeping us from evil. If we just ask Him, if we just ask Him, Lord, keep me from evil. What's the best way to do that? We are vessels. We are like empty cups. And those cups are going to be filled with something. Now I can choose what fills my cup and you can too. If I allow myself every day, if I beg God every day, fill me up with Your Holy Spirit. And if my, my cup runs over with the Holy Spirit of God, there's not room for anything else. God, keep us from evil. Fill us up with Your Spirit. Fill us up with the righteousness of Your Son, Jesus Christ. And there won't be room for anything else. 
If you want to be blessed by God, understand God blesses righteousness. God blesses us where we're at. God blesses us by keeping us from evil. And again in verse 10, God blesses us with His favor. Look at verse 10 one last time. It says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me. God blesses us with His favor. Psalm 5 and 12 again says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. Psalm 102.13 says, You will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the, time of, for the time to favor her, yes, the set time has come. In the last few weeks and months, folks, when I was younger, when I first started college, a long time ago, when I first started college, I chose my major based on what I thought I could make the most money at. I said, I think I'd be an accountant. I think I'd make the most money, the quickest and easiest, if I'm an accountant. So I took accounting. But you know what? I was pretty good at accounting. I added up the numbers, and you know, we, we did have calculators back then. It was called an abacus, but we added up the numbers, and I liked that. But you know what? I got pretty bored with that pretty quickly. Well, then I said, you know what? I like the stock market. I'm going to change my major to finance. I'm going to get into finance. So I started taking the finance classes. And I realized what a, what a cutthroat world that was. And I didn't like that either. So then I thought, you know, if I, if I go in business with my dad, I... I think I'm pretty good at this. I think we can make a lot of money at this. That didn't work out either. But you know what? As I've gone through life, I've found out that God blesses us with His favor. And if I really want to be happy, if I truly want to be blessed, I won't seek material things. I won't seek money. I'll seek God's favor. And I stand before you this morning telling you it don't matter about any money. It don't matter about cars. It doesn't matter about houses, planes, or trains. All that's really going to matter at the end was God's favor on your life. His hand on your life will mean more than anything else in this world. God's favor will mean more than that. Let's look at that Psalm 102, 13 again. He says, You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Everybody knows today's Easter. I believe everybody in the sound of my voice knows what we're celebrating today. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ is not dead in a tomb somewhere. I, you know what? I talked to some guys that went on a trip to Israel. They went over to Israel and they went to the tomb where Jesus was at. And he said, they said, you know what's in there? I said, what? He said, nothing. <laughs> because my Lord is risen. Amen. My Lord is risen today. And I read this verse and God spoke to me when I read it. Psalm 102, 13. It says, for the time to favor her, yes, the set time has come. It's only one knows when that time is. And if you don't know what that time I'm talking about is, we're going to have a time of prayer in just a minute. We're going to have a time of coming up to the altar in just a minute. We're going to have a time of getting myself and yourself right with God in just a minute. But you know what? God the Father in heaven right now, He set a time. He said the first time my son came to this earth, He came to serve you. He came to sacrifice for you. He came to die on a cross for you. And folks, I don't want to belittle that sacrifice this morning. 
Michael and I were walking out here by the railroad tracks this morning and I saw this. It reminded me. You know, we talk about Jesus being nailed to a cross. We talk about Jesus being scourged and beaten till His own friends could not even recognize who He was. When we talk about Jesus being nailed to a cross, in my mind, I like to think of little nails. Like that would make a difference. In fact, if you study Roman crucifixion, of course, that's what we were talking about. That's what we were talking about. And yet, I don't believe that was anything compared to... I don't think that was anything compared to for my Lord Jesus to when His heavenly Father had to turn away from Him because He had clothed Himself with your sin and my sin. I don't think that being driven through his hands and being driven through his ankles was anything compared to his holy father, his heavenly father, turning his back on him because of our sin. As we talk about being blessed this morning on this most precious, most important day, we need to understand this morning that as God the Father in heaven had a set, appointed time for His Son to die for your sin. Folks, this morning you've got to know above anything else. If you don't know anything else about Easter, you need to know this, that the same Jesus Christ that died on that cross for you and died on that cross for me is coming back. He's coming back. And the Holy Father in heaven has a set time that time could be today. That time could be in the next instant. 